Hello, I'm Sister Vasa, and I'm having my coffee this morning before going to work here in Vienna, in Austria. I actually have a new coffee mug today that I'll show you in just a second. The mug says Ancient Faith Radio on it, and the story behind this mug is that we got an email recently from Ancient Faith Radio and they requested that Coffee with Sister Vasa be aired from the website of Ancient Faith Radio. So we of course asked what's in it for us and they said a free coffee mug that says Ancient Faith Radio. Well, we didn't agree all that easily of course and we insisted after you know discussing this with the crew that we should have at least two free mugs out of this deal. So, after some difficult negotiations, Ancient Faith Radio agreed, and we were sent to free, completely free coffee mugs. And so we will soon be airing coffee with Sister Vasa also from Ancient Faith Radio. But let's get on with our show. It's the final week in October and the beginning of November, and we have a very exciting show for you today. Give me that old time religion, give me that old time religion, give me that old time religion. It's Today we will be reflecting on the lives of Saints Abramios and Maria celebrated on October 29th. St. Abramius was a hermit, meaning he led an ascetical life alone as a recluse in the mid-fourth century. He was actually a contemporary of last week's saints, Marcion and Martyrius. He was also a good friend of the famous Ephraim the Syrian. Abramius lived in a hut not far from the city of Lamsakus in the northwestern part of Asia Minor, or today's Turkey. He lived in this hut for 50 years, focusing entirely on God in prayer and meditation. It says in his life that he received the gift of speaking words of wisdom and consolation, and that many people would come from afar to speak with him and to be strengthened in their own life's journeys. It so happened that Abramius' own brother died in his hometown, leaving behind an orphan, a seven-year-old named Maria, Abramius' niece. And since Abramius was the only surviving relative, Maria was brought to his hut and simply left at his doorstep. So she lived in this hut now, uh, in a separate room with a separate entrance, and Abramius taught Maria to read and to write and to pray and meditate as he did. So Maria lived for 20 years as an ascetic and was actually an exemplary and very zealous one. But it so happened that uh, one day a monk a certain monk visited Abramius, seeking his advice, and this monk caught a glimpse of Maria, who was very pretty. And he really wanted to seduce her because he became so attracted to her. So he began to visit St. Abramius frequently, as if to seek advice from him, but actually wanting to seduce Maria. Finally, he succeeded in doing so, because one day St. Abramius did not come out of his cell or his room and remained in prayer in his own room. And this monk got Maria to let, her, to let him into her room. Long story short, they slept together. And so this monk did as a man does in this situation and left. And after this, Maria felt so terrible and ashamed that she even wanted to commit suicide. And she thought to herself, how can she ever face her uncle again? And how can she even return to her prayers? You see, she thought herself unworthy to approach God. So in her despair, she decided to leave the hut without saying a word to Abramius. And she went to another town, changed her clothing. And at this town, she found a job as a prostitute at an inn, where the innkeeper offered not only rooms, but prostitutes to travelers interested in that sort of thing. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Abramius didn't know exactly what happened to Maria, but it was revealed to him in a dream. And 
For two years, he tried to discover her whereabouts by making inquiries with、uh, local people, and finally, he learned where she was. So he really wanted to bring her back, and he dressed up as a soldier so that nobody would recognize him, and in this clothing, set off to this inn where he booked a room. And when he was having dinner at the dining hall of this inn, Maria came in dressed as a prostitute. He pretended not to recognize her, and she did not recognize him because of the way he was dressed. Now he was overwhelmed with grief and compassion, seeing her as she looked at that time. But he started to flirt with her, and he even ordered lots of meat and wine for the both of them. Although he hadn't had either meat or wine in decades, but now he had both. And as Maria was flirting with him, it says in this life that she even sat in his lap and started kissing his neck. And as she did so, she smelled something familiar. You know, this hut where she used to live. Although she still didn't recognize him, and when she suddenly remembered her previous life, she sighed deeply and said, "Oh my God!" And the innkeeper, hearing her say this, said, "What's with you all of a sudden, Maria?" And she just answered, "If I had died several years ago, I would have been very happy." So eventually, Abramius takes Maria to his room, as if to sleep with her, and takes off his helmet when they are alone. And she, of course, now recognizes him and stands there like a stone. She's completely stunned, and he starts to say to her, "My child, why didn't you tell me what had happened so that I could have taken your burden upon myself? Don't you know that only God is without sin?" For hours he speaks to her this way because she does not immediately hear what he is saying. But eventually she comes around and she says, "Are you sure that God will accept me back?" So he takes her back to the hut and she resumes her ascetical life. And both of them died just about ten years after that. She died briefly after Saint Abramius did, and all this happened in around the year three sixty. Saint Abramius was able to help Saint Maria through love, not through judgment. How did he love Maria? Exactly as he loved himself. Throughout his many years of ascetical struggle, Abramius was confronted with his own imperfections, whatever they were, and he had gained a wealth of self-knowledge. He knew very well, you see, that he was not perfect. We are all confronted on a daily basis with our own imperfections. And of course, we put up with ourselves because, to a certain degree at least, we all love ourselves, and this is a very good thing, as Christ says, "Love your neighbor as yourself." So Abramius perceived Maria's predicament precisely as he perceived his own life, with love and compassion. Maria herself had lost a large part of her sense of self-love and self-worth. This can happen, you see, if you sleep with someone you shouldn't sleep with. You can lose this precious gift of self-love, without which, really, managing your life is impossible. You might not realize it's happening, but you will experience pangs of self-doubt and a lack of self-confidence like never before. And this happened to Maria. She completely gave up. She felt she doesn't deserve any connection to God anymore, and she felt she had nothing to lose. Hence. Her life at this terrible inn. Abramius was able to revive Maria's sense of self-love because he shared his own, reminding us to hold on to this precious gift of loving ourselves. Yes, to hold on to it so that we can extend it to others. Well, that's it for our show. Saints Abramius and Maria, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.